the wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. Space Patrol is presented by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those terrific Nestle's Chocolate Bars. What'll happen if she gets pulled into the head of the comet? Might split the nucleus half. What'll that do? There'd be a big explosion. There'd be no more nucleus and no more ship. Stand by for exciting action on Prisoners of the Giant Comet in just one moment. Come and get it! Come on, all you space patrollers. Come and get the richest, most chock full of chocolate milk in the whole universe. I'm talking about Nestle's Quick. Me for Nestle's Quick? I could drink gallons of it. Well, Tony, how about making some for us right now? Sure, it's a snap. Just pour a glass of milk out, add two teaspoons of Nestle's Quick to it, give it a little stir, and it's all ready to drink. Here. Quick is really the greatest. It ought to be, because that's the same sensational flavor as Nestle's chocolate bars. Milk never had it so good. You said it, Tony. Quick makes milk taste like a million. And Quick makes milk a million-dollar energy drink, too. Adds plenty of vitamin D for good, sound teeth and strong bones. Mom will be mighty glad to buy you Quick when she sees how you drink it down to the very last drop. And you can make yourself a big, frosty, cool glass of Quick anytime. Just add two spoonfuls of Quick after you pour your milk. It mixes instantly, stays mixed to the very last drop. Tony, why don't you show all the space patrollers how really cosmic Nestle's Quick tastes? Tony, that tells the story better than I ever could. Now, you try it. Ask Mom to get the big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick. Q-U-I-K, Quick. And say, be sure to listen in a few minutes for details on the Cosmic Rocket Launcher. Communications. Get out on all planets and all ships at once. Cancel all interplanetary flight plans. Direct all ships in space to land at nearest spaceport at first opportunity. Planet Corey, out. Yeah, okay, put it out. Yeah, go ahead. That's knocked out interplanetary communications on the outer fringes of the system, sir. Yeah, yeah. 18 satellite weather stations been knocked over there off their orbit by a tremendous gravitational pull. What's the comet speed? Look, if you computed its speed, See every available computer at astronomical calculating services being being used, but none of them, none of them knocked out the information yet. Well, they say the acceleration is so tremendous that they haven't been able to pin it down. But when we do get the figures in, we won't believe them. I believe that. Well, look, keep me posted on any change in the comet's course. And check me up on the speed as soon as you get it. Robertson out. Is it true what I heard that a big comet has entered the system from outer space? It's true. They say it's the biggest one they've ever seen. An understatement. They said the head of the comet is oh, it's uh, almost a million miles across and the tail is several million miles long. Well, that's about it. Oh, I'm sure glad that comets aren't dangerous. Now, this one is. Robbie? Yeah. Robbie, look at these. You know, a comet, a comet that size could really... You say it is? Check the positions of these weather stations. See if they're in the comet's path. Right. Oh, hello, Hap. Huh? Commander, I want the position these well. Oh, Commander, I thought, I thought comets were tenuous, uh, transparent, didn't amount to much more than a meteoric shower. Oh, this one's a real giant, Hap. He apparently has a great deal more mass than any comets previously reported. It's exuding tremendous gravitational pull and magnetic disturbance. Oh, they could cause a lot of damage. Well, not to the planets, probably, but it's pulling our satellite weather stations out of their orbits. And frankly, Hap, I hate to be near this giant comet. You got it? In a spaceship. Okay. Pull. Yeah, Romeo. Smoking rockets, Major. Wouldn't you know it? We're all set to go investigate this 
ancient Martian totem head, and along comes a big comet and has got to spoil it for us. You're not in space, are you? Oh, of course I am, but what's the emergency about? A comet. A giant comet has entered the system. What's your position? Quickly. Uh, 46,000 EU from Mars, on to Terra on Space Meridian 157.3. Vector 243 degrees, 10 degrees high. Got that, Robbie? Yeah, got it. Bush, you sound alarmed. Is this comet really dangerous? I'll say it's dangerous. If you happen to be in its path, it has enough gravity to pull you right off your course. Matter. Look at this. Here's the position of Carol's ship. Right in the path of that comet. What shall I do, Buzz? Shall I shall I come about her? Carol, come about as quickly as you can. Head back to Mars. Give that ship everything it's got. Carol, did you hear me? Carol! Yes, yes Buzz, I, I heard you. What's the matter? Is something wrong? I see it. I see the comet. Rockets. She says she's in a comet's tail. That means the head missed her. Carol, Carol, try to maintain contact. You've got to pull out of that comet. Are your rockets still firing? Do you still have power? Do you still have power? Yes, sir. Rockets are firing. I do have power. What shall I do? Can you give me instructions? Something's happened. I seem to be traveling with the comet. Yes, I am. I'm being pulled along with it. Brother, I've been captured by the comet. Carol, listen carefully. Your only chance is to fly out of that comet's tail. A fire all rockets. Use every bit of emergency power that ship can produce. Try to maneuver toward the edge. But whatever you do, get out of there. Uh, I'll try, Buzz. Smoke and rockets, Commander. What if she can't get out of the tail of that comet? She'll go wherever the comet goes. And at the rate it's traveling, it'll whip around the sun and out of this system in no time. Well, it'll pull her way out into galactic space. It'd be... It'd be the last we ever saw or heard of Carol. It's no use, Bud. My ship doesn't have enough power. I can't pull free. No, I don't even have enough power to alter my course. That small space car she's flying, it hasn't got enough power to force its way out of a paper bag. Oh, I bet the Terra 5 would have enough power to break away from that comet. I bet it will, too, Happy. Sure it would. It, it... Did you say will, sir? Yes. Robbie, get the latest information from ACS on that comet's path. Yes, sir. Then chart a course from Terra. That'll intercept it before it leaves our system. We're going to fly Terra 5 in there after Carol. Right. Astronomical calculating service. Robertson here. Look, give me the latest dope on that, that comet. Present position, computed path, speed, the works. And on the double. A few minutes later, armed with all the available information on the giant intruder from outer space and a grim determination to wrest the monster comet's prey from its very clutches, Buzz, Happy, and Robbie race to the Terra spaceport in a fast surface car, hasten aboard the Terra 5, and in a few short seconds are ready to blast off. Fire rockets. Yes, sir. A 
Oh, chipping away. With all rockets burning, they are soon streaking across space to keep their rendezvous with the giant comet and unknown dangers. Any sign of it yet, Robbie? No, not yet, sir. Well, don't take your eyes off that viewscope. Carol, can you hear me? Well, the gravity field is increasing. I'm being pulled closer to the head of the comet every second. Smoke and rocket splitter. What'll happen if she gets pulled into the head of that comet? Might split the nucleus, Happy. What would that do? There'd be a big explosion. There'd be no more nucleus and no more ship. Commander, I, I spotted it. the comet. We're going to hit a broadside. Keep your eyes on the target, Space Patrollers. Ready now? Fire! Man, that is speed. This is the famous cosmic rocket launcher Commander Corey has been offering all of his friends. Now, hear this. So many of you fellows and girls have sent for this sensational rocket launcher that we won't be able to make this offer much longer. That means if you haven't sent for yours yet, better do it, and soon. Let me show you again what this terrific offer includes. You get this break-proof plastic rocket, a real model of the one Commander Corey uses. Now, watch while we show you in slow motion how this cosmic rocket launcher actually works. You press down on this stainless steel launching gun, and off it goes, down, down, down the entire 33 feet of this special nylon cord you get. When it hits its target right on the nose, it automatically releases this scout car in midair. Then you can snap the scout car back in like this, slide it back along the cord, load it, and fire it again at full speed. That's pretty terrific, isn't it? But time is getting short, so send for yours today. Here's how you do it. Just send the special premium panel from the side of the Nestle's quick can or the lid or a rice checks or wheat checks box top, along with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. And say, if you have never tasted Nestle's Quick before, you're in for another sensational cosmic treat. Man, what a rich chocolate flavor it gives to milk. Yes, sir just like your favorite Nestle's chocolate bars. It's this big brown and yellow can that says Q-U-I-K. Nestle's Quick. And now back to Space Patrol. The instruments are registering a strong magnetic pull from the direction of that comet. They're just steering vane to stay out of it until we can locate the position of Carol's ship. Yes, sir. We'll enter the comet's tail as close to that point as possible. Carol, this is Buzz again. Carol! He doesn't answer. But if you can hear me, listen carefully. Don't fly into this comet. The magnetic field has cut out my rocket. The air purifiers are gone and... My spaceship phone is dead, too. The instruments register a body of substantial size directly ahead inside the comet. How substantial? Big enough to be Carol's ship. Did your steering vanes have to give it full rockets? Into the comet, sir? Into the comet. Ah, this is a rock! Right 
maneuver so that you're going with the comet instead of across it. Yes, sir. Gravitational pull ought to help you. Yes. Look for Carol's ship. Helplessly, Carol's small craft slips closer and closer to the head of the comet, a prisoner of the monster freak of nature. And Carol, certain that the last hope of being rescued is gone, is powerless to prevent the oncoming disaster. All power aboard her ship has been completely knocked out by the magnetic field of the comet. Worst of all, the air purifiers have gone dead. The air has long since gone foul. And finally, Carol succumbs. <laughs> The bigger, more powerful battlecruiser, however, has so far withstood the attack of the magnetic field and is still under power. But in its search for Carol's ship, it too is venturing closer and closer toward the head of the comet. Commander, look. I'm just happy I see it. That Carol's ship looks all right. It's still in one piece anyway. The rockets aren't high. Bobby, try to pull it under. Happy and I are going out there and bring Carol aboard. Come on. Yes,
minutes in that space car without oxygen, she'd have been a goner. You know, she hasn't come around yet. Maybe we didn't get there in time after all. Carol. Carol, do you hear me? Have the emergency kit. I only hope this brings her around. How's oh, Carol, Robbie? I just gave her a paper and take this out. She's not responding very well. Let's get the oxygen mask on for now. We're checking her from time to time. Yes, sir. Billy Vincent. They're acting haywire. Maggie's up and let's get out of here quick before it's too late. Good. What are we going to do? How are we going to get out, sir? Commander, what about the emergency at tunnel battery? Couldn't we hook them up and fire the rockets again? Well, they wouldn't give us enough power to break the dragon and then hold those things out on us. It was no big sense. I've never seen a comet with this magnetic effect before. Everything must really be poor, I Smoke and rockets. Prisoners of a comet for eternity. Maybe not. Well, or until we blow up and we ram into the head of it. Maybe not that either. Well, oh, what's up, sir? You got an idea? Maybe. What would happen if we... If we reversed the polarity? If we polarized Terra 5 and reversed the polarity? Why, we'd be repelled out of this comet so fast that... Okay. Hey. Might work at that, sir. Of course, we take a terrific beating in the process, but it'd be worth it. Well, well how are we going to do it? The emergency batteries you mentioned may not give us enough power to break out of here, but I think if we connect them directly to the hull of the ship through a relay that will handle them all as a unit, we can actually produce reverse polarity of the ship. That's worth a chance, sir. Let's go. Hit the deck and hang on. Yes, sir. You still have the commander. It helped us a life to try and save you. Uh, I was only teasing, Robbie. I don't know how you did it, but I'm certainly glad you did. I'm very grateful. The commander's the one that did it. He's the one that got us out of that whole mess. Hey, where is the commander? Up here. Uh, oh. uh, can we go home now, commander? <laughs> I'm afraid not. We're gonna have to land and repair the ship first, and that's our problem. What do you mean? Look straight ahead. What planet is that? Doesn't belong to our system. That I know. Wow, then that, that comet, it, it pulled, us, pulled us clear out of our solar system. That's right, Happy. How far we'll never know till we get our instruments working. There's one thing for sure. We're going to have to land on the surface of that strange planet. A planet we've never seen before. <laughs> In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized breakfast cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. <laughs> Say, Space Patrollers, you're just in time for the sensational high-altitude run of our cosmic rocket launcher. There's my pal, stationed 33 feet up at the very end of our nylon launching cord. Launching gun ready. On target. Blast off. You see that? Just a press of the trigger and down that breakproof nylon cord, the rocket goes flying. Hits its target, automatically releases this scout car. Real neat. Real George, Space Patrollers. Try your own cosmic rocket launcher from a second story window. Do it. Space Patroller, on target in the backyard. Here's how to get yours. Just send a rice checks or wheat checks box top or 
the special premium panel from the side of a Nestle's quick can or the lid, together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 812, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget to include your 25 cents. This offer good only in USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now, a scene from next week's exciting adventure, The Demon Planet. Yes, ma'am. Promise me that you and Hap won't wander away from the ship. Oh, well, why not? Oh, I can't explain it, but I have a feeling there's something strange about this planet. Strange? Yes, there's, there's something out there, and something that's very dangerous. Yes, I know, Carol. I feel it, too. Be sure to see what happens when Buzz and Happy discover that Carol was right when they step out on the surface of the Demon Planet. Next week on Space Patrol. Radio every Saturday. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Brandon DeWilda stars on ABC television.